here's Dr. Jane again, and this time I'm going to read you one of my very favorite stories. It's absolutely true. It's called Ricky, that's the little chimp, and Henri. It's again illustrated by Alan Marks and here we are, a true story, Ricky and Henri. Ricky was born in the rainforest of Central Africa. For the first two years, she lived with her mother and the other chimpanzees of the community. Her mother was the center of Ricky's world. She carried her from place to place. She comforted her when she was hurting or frightened. Every hour or so, more often if she wanted, Ricky could drink the good warm milk from her mother's breasts. Perhaps she had an older brother or sister. Perhaps her grandmother was alive. We shall never know. Because one day, probably at first light, when the chimpanzees were starting to leave their night nests and feed, a loud bang disturbed the peace of the forest. Ricky's mother fell to the ground dead or mortally wounded. Screaming in terror, Ricky clung tightly to her mother, who'd never before let her down. But she couldn't help Ricky now. She would never help her again. The hunter seized Ricky and pushed her into a tiny basket, while the infant chimpanzee, who didn't understand, went on screaming and screaming for her mother. The long journey through the forest, cramped in a little basket, must have been a nightmare for Ricky. She was hungry, but there was no warm, comforting milk. She was frightened and she was hurting because shotgun pellets were lodged in her little body. But however much she cried, there was no one to help. Eventually, Ricky was tipped roughly out of the basket. She stared around in bewilderment. Everywhere there were huge people crowding close and staring at her, laughing in loud voices. Ricky was being offered for sale in one of the markets of Brazzaville in the Congo Republic. It was hot and she was tired and thirsty. Her wounds were hurting even more. Desperately, she looked around for her mother crying softly, but her mother didn't come and none of the people understood. Ricky stopped crying and curled up on the ground. She closed her eyes. The tall, distinguished Congolese man, who stopped presently to look at her, thought that maybe the little chimpanzee infant was dead. He bent down and touched her. She opened her eyes. She was too tired and weak to be frightened. The tall man knew it was against the law to capture and sell infant chimpanzees. He was angry and threatened the hunter, saying he would report him to the officials. The hunter, who probably didn't even know the law of the land, was scared and ran off, leaving Ricky behind. So the tall man picked up Ricky, who was stiff with terror. He wrapped his jacket around her and carried her back to his house. As he went up the steps, his shaggy dog Henri sniffed at the strange smelling creature in his master's jacket. He growled a little then curled up and went back to sleep. The tall man was very kind to Ricky. He found out the right food for an infant chimpanzee and fed her good meals. He asked a doctor to take the shotgun pellets from her neck and back, and gradually some of her joy in life returned. Of course, she must often have thought about her mother and her life in the forest but she learned to make the best of her new way of living, part of a human family. The tall man was her guardian and Ricky loved him best. She was terribly upset when he had to go away on a business trip. The rest of the family didn't like her in the house. 
They went on feeding her, but they shut her outside. Good food is certainly necessary for an infant chimpanzee, but just like a human child, Ricky needed affectionate contact with a caring adult. She needed love. We all do, right? In her desperation, she turned to the only adult she could find, Henri the dog. She went over to him as he sat watching her and reached out to hold his fur. At first he was scared. Each time she reached out, he growled a little and moved away. But eventually, he let her hold on to him. When he lay to sleep, she lay beside him, still holding on to his fur, just as she would hold on to the hair of her mother. What a lovely picture they make, a small black chimpanzee with huge sad eyes clinging tightly to a medium-sized brown shaggy dog whose bright eyes peered onto the world through his thick fringe of curly fur. When Henri went around the streets of Brazzaville scrounging food from the dustbins, as all real dogs will do if they have an opportunity, Ricky went with him. She rode on his back, clinging on tight with arms and legs, just as if she was riding on her mother. And at night, she snuggled close beside him, holding his fur even when she was asleep. For several weeks, Ricky and Aubrey could be seen together in the streets or in the back garden of the big house where they lived. And then the tall man came back. Ricky was very pleased to see him and hugged and kissed him for a long time. But she still spent a lot of time riding about on Aubrey and sleeping close beside him when her human guardian was at work. At last, the time came when Ricky was far too big and heavy for Henri. It was very important for her to live with others of her kind so that she could learn chimpanzee behavior, chimpanzee manners. And so, though sad to part with her, her guardian sent her to a sanctuary where many orphans like herself were cared for. Soon, Ricky made many new friends. And what about Henri? Wasn't he sad losing his chimpanzee friend? He was, of course, but not for long. The tall man felt sorry for his little brown dog, and so he found a new friend, another dog, dark and about the same size as Aubrey. So everyone was happy at the end. And then there's a postscript. It was in 1993 that Ricky arrived at the Jane Goodall Institute's Chimpunga Sanctuary near Point Noir in the Republic of Congo. It's our biggest sanctuary. There were 115 orphans when I visited in July 2003. Ricky was a healthy adolescent then. Today, there are even more orphans. The country around the sanctuary is beautiful, a mixture of forest and savanna stretching down to the unspoiled shore of the Atlantic Ocean. Quite a few wild chimpanzees are still living there and we're working with the government to try and protect the whole area. If only we could set our orphans free there, but sadly this isn't possible. There are too many villages. Our chimpanzees would almost certainly approach people who might either be hurt or hurt someone. Moreover, wild chimpanzees protect their territory fiercely from strangers and might well kill our orphans. We're trying to find a forest far from people and wild chimpanzees, but this isn't easy. There are not many places like that, certainly not ones suitable for chimpanzees to live, but we haven't given up. If you would like to learn more about Chimpunga and our other sanctuary, Chimp Eden in South Africa, and about the work of the Jane Goodall Institute, check our website at www.janegoodall.org. You can learn how you can help us to care for Ricky. Once she needed her mother, then she needed Henri and her human guardian. Now she needs you. 
so do all the other orphans like her. You can adopt one. Lots of love from Jane.